Well, hey everybody, it's an evening. It is, it's seven o'clock on Monday, July 10, 2017. And I was downstairs on my bed. I was already in my pajama top. <laughs> and I was reading my comments and there was two questions that y'all wanted answered and I knew if I didn't run right up here and answer them, <laughs> I never would. Well, actually one's not really a question. It was just something that made me remember something I wanted to tell you guys. But anyway, several of you have asked me where I got these tables. Now, you do know my brain is almost, in August, 67 years old. <laughs> and, I, and I remember. I thought I would lift up the table and see if there was a name or a carving or... I don't know. I have two of them, and they're both really nice. These are not the Joanne Fabric type of table. They're, these aren't the $99 kind. These are hard, heavy wood, and they each have a drawer, and they each fold down. This leaf folds down, this leaf folds down, and the table's only this wide when the tops are folded down. They both have mini wheels, and they both have locking wheels, and they're very nice. Now, I think one of them might have come from this place called Ken's Sewing Center, and I put a link in someone's comment to it. But just Google Ken's Sewing Center, and he does have some cutting tables, and I think the one I just saw was like $500. But if you consider, you know, I've been sewing for 30, 35, 40 years, and I've had these tables for at least 30 of them, and they're still like brand new, you know, they never wear out. So consider how much that is a year, a month, a day, and the quality of it. And so $500 isn't bad. I paid $1,000 for that Martelli table over there. And that was supposedly a big sale price. I was at a quilt show. And the reason I really like that table is it's hydraulic and it can go up and it can go down and the top of it can tilt up at any position and tilt down. But <laughs> it's my jewelry making table now and it doesn't tilt or go up or down or anything. So anyway, you want to know how big these tables are. I'm going to have to have something to measure. They have cutting mats on top. Now, I think I can tell you where I got the cutting mat from. This is called Mega Mat, and it's from Quilters Rule. And there's a www.quiltersrule.com. So you can go there. Now, I don't know if they have the table, but I know that's where I got this mat. And this mat over here says... Horn of America, and there's www.hornofamerica.com. I don't have a lot of horn stuff because it's very, very expensive, and I just never did have the need for it, I guess. But somehow this cutting mat says horn. The table has no markings. They're both so nice, you guys. This one's kind of an almond color, and this one's a white color. And it looks like they're both the same size. Let me see. Where's the actual inches? 70, I think it's 72 by, I have a measuring tape. Ah, here it is. Ta-da, right next to you. You're hiding it from me. Okay, let me see how wide. 40 inches, that one's 40 inches wide. And this one is 40 inches wide. And they're both, 72 inches long. So 40 by 72. And you know, the other day I had them butted up together. And oh, it was really, really nice working with them that way. But I needed to get something out of the drawer, and so I had to push them apart. So anyway, that's all I can tell you about that. But I wanted to tell you about the nasty teacher I had. Now, I haven't been quilting for as long as I've been sewing. I've been sewing since I was a teenager. But I started quilting, oh, let me see, I was already married to Jerry, and he bought me a new sewing machine and at a Bernina store, and the Bernina store moved into a nicer, bigger location, and they started giving classes, sewing classes, and um, like I took some embroidery classes there. No embroidery machine, and you just like made a jacket, and then you just, you didn't embroider it, you quilted it. That's how I started, quilted jacket. 
Took a quilted jacket class. I have no idea where it is. Or it was a vest. I think it was a vest. I probably didn't like it and gave it to Salvation Army. <laughs> but anyway, I started with that. And so then, years later, um, I thought, you know what? They had, you know, these classes posted all the time and these quilts up on the walls. And, and I don't think I knew anybody that quilted. But I thought, you know what? I think I want to learn how to quilt now. And so I took the beginning quilting class with, oh gosh, what is her name? Oh, she's the one that did the chickens. Oh, joy, your memory. And I'm taking Prevagen every day for 90 days. And in 90 days, you're supposed to have a memory again. <laughs> oh, oh, it'll come to Bartlett, Bartlett, Nancy Bartlett. Hey, that's good, huh? Her name was Nancy Bartlett. And she had a beginning quilting class. And the quilt that I first made is right over here on my cutting table. Let me take the camera off. Or let me just aim it. Hold on a second and I'll aim it. Right there it is. That's the $1,000 table, Martelli. And here's the very, 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 very first quilt. And it was a sampler quilt. You can't even hardly see it. And I quilted it with my sewing machine. But I, I was into blue and pink then. And you can see it's just got, however many blocks it is, just every block was a different block. So that was my very first quilt. So I got that quilt done. And then I think maybe uh, Nancy Bartlett had the chicken quilt class. And I just love the chicken quilt. I don't know if y'all remember my chicken quilt. But if you want to see it, let me know. And I'll give you some pictures on my blog of it. It's really, really awesome. It's one of the best ones I've ever done. Applique. I think that's why I got stuck in applique. I started out in that chicken quilt and it was applique and I've kind of been applique ever since. Oh yes, and because of the story I'm getting ready to tell you, no wonder. Um, I decided there was this other class there and this lady, I cannot remember her name. Oh, Mary Beth. Her name was Mary Beth, I think. And the class was called You Can Sit on My Quilt. Maybe you can sit on my quilt any time. And it was about a book that a lady wrote. Her name was Mary Ellen something. And she wrote a book about how to easily piece your quilts together so it didn't take forever to make them and you could make them really fast and you could make any quilt with her method or whatever. So you had to buy this book of hers. And believe it or not, I think I just threw them away not very long ago. I was rearranging. Oh, when I was wrapping on the fabric around those bolts, you guys remember that? I had to get rid of a bookcase out there and I had to get rid of some books and I think I just gave it all to the Goodwill. I thought every time I look at this, it just upsets me because of this teacher. So <laughs> I just gave away all the diagrams, all the lessons, the book and everything. But the thing was, it was like, I don't know, about nine weeks, maybe longer of a class. And every week you had to make a quilt top. Now, I hadn't even made the chickens yet. I just took the chicken class at that. I think we made one block, and it was an easy block, and I had put that all away. And I had finished that quilt. But that is all the quilting I had done. That is it. So I took this class. Well, everybody in that class was the age I am now. To me, I thought, oh, this is all old women in here. And I was, what was I, 30? And so I'm like the youngest one in the class. So, and I'm working, I'm working a full-time job, 40 hours, I've got two kids at home, <clears throat> you know, and um, so I don't have all the time in the world, but I want to take this class because I want to learn how to piece quilts, and this is supposed to be easy and everybody can sit on your quilt, right? So, I got through lesson one, two, three, I don't know, well, whatever lesson this was came up, and we were on whatever page in the book, and the lesson was, in my understanding, that you were supposed to make a quilt and one of the blocks in the quilt had to be a pieced block and the other block in the quilt was supposed to be a plain block. So you'd have pieced, plain, pieced, plain, pieced, plain. So I came home and I'm telling you, I, it was like end of the season final test or something, you know, and my life depended on it. I mean, I was really, really serious. I always am. I'm always very serious about whatever project I start, and I want to do it right, you know. And I've usually been like teacher's pet and head of the class, <laughs> but in this case. <laughs> so I looked and I looked and I looked through that book for something I thought I could do, because you had to have a completed quilt top. I mean, I would come in there, and my quilts would be the size of a sandwich, you know, <laughs> or a scarf. 
And these old ladies would have queen size crop tops done. <laughs> you know, she got there and say, Oh, Mrs. Jones, look what Mrs. Jones is. Oh, come, could a couple of ladies come help me hold this quilt up? <laughs> hold the quilt up. And here I am sitting out there. And then the next lady, Oh, here, come help me hold this up. Oh, look at it. It's just wonderful and marvelous. And the next one, and the next one. Then she'd get to mine. And it's like, Oh. <laughs> This is Joy's homework. <laughs> so, you know, that had been my experience up until that night. You know, I knew mine was going to be the lousiest no matter what I did. But anyhow, she came to my, she went through all the big quilts and she went, oh, isn't this wonderful? Isn't this amazing? Oh, let's take pictures, 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 pictures. Oh, isn't that just wonderful, fabulous? And I'm just sitting there and I'm sweating and I'm scared because I know my quilt's little. And I don't know that I've done it wrong. I mean, I can see what they've done, and I assume theirs is wonderful and right, but I can't tell mine's different than theirs, other than it's always very small. <laughs> so she gets through all of their amazing masterpieces, and she gets to mine, and she picks it up, and she goes, what? What is this supposed to be? Whose is this? I, what is this supposed to be? And oh, I just could have died a thousand deaths. I did not want to say it was mine, I promise you. It wasn't quilted then, it was just a top, right? But look at this. Is this not a pieced block and a plain block? Is it not? I mean, I work really, really hard on this, you guys. <laughs> And I was so proud that I got my homework done. And she held it up and just made fun of it. And I was just absolutely devastated. I was heartbroken. And the worst part was, to this day, I don't know what I did wrong. It's a plain block and a piece block. And so years later, when I got my long arm, I decided I'd use it for practice. If I screwed it up, who'd care? So look at what I named it. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? Yep. You can see the quilting on the back. I mean, it's not a masterpiece or anything. But I think it's very cute. And I didn't think I did that horrible of a job quilting it with no computer and being a brand new long arm quilter. So anyway, yeah, I kept it. But um, that was my one horrible teacher, and I had another one, and it was at the Bernina store again. What's with the Bernina store? Was that the Bernina store? Yeah. This was even before that happened. And I was always buying new Berninas because I went every month to, they had this once a month class that you could go to at Bernina, and you paid so much a year. And you could go and you could take your show and tell, and then they would always show you the latest, greatest machine. And so I bought the 930, then I bought the 1130, then I bought the 830, and you know, I bought a lot of machines from these people, not to mention every time I bought a machine, I bought a serger. So this was like I had already bought about six machines from these people. And I was in there taking the lesson on whatever machine, I'll bet it was the embroidery machine. And it was a big, long room like this. And there was tables lined up all along one wall and tables lined up across the room all along the other wall. And then there was sewing machine, sewing machine, sewing machine, sewing machine, sewing machine, probably eight sewing machines on each side and eight ladies on each side. And so I was way back in the corner. And the teacher was up in the front of the room. Well, it was about time for the class to start, I guess. And I was way back in the corner. And the lady next to me started talking to me. Or I started talking to her, I don't even remember for sure. But for some reason, either she was trying to help me or I was trying to help her. I don't know if she forgot a certain foot or I forgot a foot or whatever. But whatever the conversation was, <clears throat> she must have asked me for something because I was fiddling around with my stuff and trying to find something. And I was saying something to her and the teacher from the front of the class goes, <coughs> Joy, um, if you have something to say, why don't you say it to the whole class? I thought, you witch, you absolute witch. <laughs> so anyway, 
I shut up, never said another word, sat there through the whole class steaming. When the class was over, I went up there and I told that woman off. I said, I have bought six top of the line machines from this place. And if I want to get up on the top of these tabletops and do a dance, you ought to applaud me, not correct me, especially in front of everybody else in this room. And I packed up my machine and I left. I was furious. So anyway, long story short, I didn't go back to Bernina for years and years and years and years and years after that. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't take the quilt classes at the Bernina store. Oh, the privileges. It's starting to kick in, you guys. Um, I took the quilting classes at Oklahoma Quilt Works. Yes, that's where that Mary Beth was. It said, what is this supposed to be? And that's where that Nancy Barrett, I think her name was Barrett, Nancy Barrett. You can Google her. She has a website. Is it called Needle and Thread or has something about a needle in it? Oh, she has the really cutest quilt patterns. She's very talented. She's an artist and she draws really good. So I think her name was Nancy Barrett. So that's where I learned to quilt, you guys, not the Bernina store. I wouldn't have gone back to that Bernina store if the lessons were free. I was so upset with them. So anyway, that's my horrible teacher stories. <laughs> and that's all I know about my tables. And oh, listen, if you still don't know and you haven't heard and you don't read the comments, you can get the book, this book, eBay or Amazon. Check it out, Country Bouquet Quilts. Oh, one of the girls said, I'm not about to pay $2,400 for that book. <laughs> I'll let y'all have it for a thousand. <laughs> anyway, it's late. I'm giddy. I gotta go. So, that's all I know about my tables. And I'll be back soon. Bye.